Hi, I'm Nils, and welcome to part two of Mudding and Taping. If you haven't seen the first video, check it out. There's a link right here. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to the part where we've got the first uh, layer of tape on there and mud on here. We've covered a lot of the screw holes and different things like that. And now we're going to go through and try to even things out, put another layer of mud on there. Um, we're going to use the all-purpose joint compound on this one again. It's the stuff in the green box usually, or a green lid. And we're just going to try to use the, the wider uh, 10 or 12 inch knife and spread out some of this. The first step though is just to clean off some of the excess stuff that we've got. So if we see little, little spots and spills and bumps and stuff like that, we're going to clean all those off. We're going to go throughout the whole uh, area that we're working in and clean all of that off. Once you're done with that, we put on the uh, dust mask and then grab a sander of some sort. There's lots of different kinds, so I'm going to use one of these guys and just start sanding this down. So I'll show you that as we go, but that's the first step of the second stage. Now that I've got everything cleaned up, it's time to go ahead and start applying a new coat of mud on here. And I've got my trowel all filled with mud. I've got a nice long blade here, a 12 inch in this case. And I'm just gonna scoop some on here, get a good coat of it on here, and then just start to smooth out this section. The whole purpose here is try to make areas that are uneven from one board to the other nice and even so there's no visible transition going on. That's why these wider blades are really nice. I'm going to use a good, good bit of mud if they're off at all like these two pieces are. I've got some definite filling in to do. Just apply as much as you need. It's better to do multiple thin coats than to do one really thick coat. You end up with quite a bit of excess once you start actually putting some pressure on there and getting the stuff off. I'm seeing a little bit of this kind of texturing going on here and I don't mind that too much especially for right now because when I come back I can sand that down and when it comes time to texture we're going through for a kind of European texture look anyway so that's okay. I'm going to keep working my way down. Alright, as you can see, we have now done stage two of mudding and taping. I've got a pretty uh, well applied, evened out layer on uh, all the mud. And I've got some spots where I did the corner here, for example, where there's some dimpling that takes place inside the little uh, holes that are inside the corner piece here. So I'm going to want to hit that with another coat. A lot of times that kind of sucks in on that first coat when it's wet, so a second coat should take care of that nicely. Um, again, the objective of this coat is really just to smooth things out, get any joints or butts that are next to, next to each other to be able to be nice and smoothed over so you can't tell that there's any joints or anything going on, that it just looks like it's all one solid piece all around. And uh, so we'll now uh, move on to the next step as soon as this is dry, on to coat number three. Welcome back to the next stage here. So now we've got our second coat going. The next step is just to start sanding down some of this so that we can apply our, our third coat um, or as many coats as you've needed at this point. Um, I've still got a little bit of the stippling here so I'm going to do a light coat there. Um, we're going to move away from the all-purpose uh, compound and move to the topping compound on this one in the, in the blue lid or the blue box. And I'm just going to start um, sanding some of this stuff away. Make sure to wear some respiratory protection on this. I 
we'll start uh, just kind of knocking down these corners. The stuff is pretty easy to come off. In these corners here, I've got a sponge uh, sander that's got kind of an angled shape on both sides so that I can get up into the corners easy enough. It really smooth things out. Just knocking down any any big spots. You can see how quickly I can knock down any uh, rough edges or anything that I've created in the process. So I'm going to go through the bathroom, kind of run through that process, and then, then I'm going to be ready to uh, apply another light coat on here. And this will kind of be my final topping coat to get the wall prepped for the texturing portion of things. So when I finished sanding, I went ahead and, and uh, grabbed my blade, uh, again the nice wide one, I've got a 12 inch one here, to 8, 10, 12 will do, and started using the topping compound to smooth out some of these sections in here that just needed a little final touch on them. Uh, keep in mind that you can still go back and re-sand some of the stuff before you apply the texture, giving it a chance to be nice and smooth so you don't snag or catch on anything. Make sure you get in these corners and everything really well, and so you end up with a nice smooth, even corner or something for you to run up run your texture and your knife up against. Uh, check out my next video so you can see how we do the texturing on this. We're going for kind of a Euro style texture and hopefully we'll see you there.